Okay, well, I will just start with a few announcements. These go out to the uh, listserv anyway. Uh, just a heads up that our next webinar is November 13th at 3 p.m. Eastern. Hey, Cindy, I'm seeing the captions. Yes. All right, good. That they were available. Okay, great, great. So 1113 and the topic is school, which is a program and AT for making music. So something a little bit different than the uh, usual AT topics that we cover in our demo loan community of practice. So I can now with confidence say that Today's webinar is captioned and recorded, and it will be posted in the community of practice along with the other archives, as well as the discounts and deals. Uh, please, if you are not already muted, please double check that you are muted. And at this point, I'm going to turn the program over to John, who will be introducing himself and talking about Caption Make. John. Great, thanks. Hey, everybody. Um, happy Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. We have made it halfway. So halfway to go. Um, we're going to talk today about Caption Make. Um, Amy, I'm going to rely on you. How much time do we have? Uh, we have until four o'clock. So that's a little more. That's about 53 minutes. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So today we're going to talk about Caption Mate. And Caption Mate is um, a new product or service that's out there. And we're going to talk about Caption Mate, what it is, how it differs, everything else. Hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, we're going to be looking at a PowerPoint today. Um, if you, um, please uh, text them in and uh, Amy will read them out and we will answer them as we go. Um, so our agenda for the next 45 minutes to an hour is going to be this. We're, I'll give you a little intro. I'll tell you who I am and a little bit about me so you know who you're dealing with. Um, we're gonna talk about IPCTS, uh, Internet Protocol Caption Telephone Service, and the current state of the industry. Um, who is CaptionMate, who, uh, who are we, and what are we doing, and why? Um, we will dispel some of the myths about ASR, automated speech recognition. There's a lot of them out there, and we will tackle them, and I'm sure some of you will have questions uh, about them as well. We'll do a quick demo show you how it works and technically how it works. If any of you uh, um, tech nerds out there really want to know the details, the ins and outs of it, we will tackle that. And then we'll talk about how we can partner and uh, move everything forward um, for the consumer. So that's kind of what we have on the agenda for today. So let's just jump into it. Um, if you can't see the video, see me live. Um, that's my picture down in the bottom. Um, I'm not sure it's very flattering, but there I am. Um, my name is John Gray, and that's my email address. If you want to contact me um, afterwards, john at captionmate.com. Um, and just so you know, I'm the business manager for CaptionMate. Um, and we'll talk about, obviously, about that uh, a little bit later. I've been in this industry for just over 17 years. Um, and I started off um, in the industry working for the state of Florida's equipment distribution program, very similar to uh, what happens in Pennsylvania and other states around the country. Every state's program is a little bit different, but uh, they have their own laws, their own rules and all of that. But uh, as far as equipment distribution, I worked for the state of Florida's program for about eight years. Um, and from there, I went more into the manufacturing side, and I worked for a company called Plantronics, uh, for years, Electronics is the largest uh, manufacturer of And I also worked for um, a company called Quality, um, 
for many years. Many of you probably know Clarity. Clarity is the oldest and largest manufacturer of amplified phones in the industry and has been around for quite a while. I also worked for a company called Bellman, Bellman and Symphon. They're a Swedish-based company that works in the industry on the alerting side. Um, so I have kind of have a unique perspective from um, not only uh, serving the consumer kind of where the rubber meets the road, where a lot of you are uh, also, but then on the other side of the table on the manufacturing and production uh, side as well. Um, product manager, I've done that for a long time and um, I do have hearing loss myself. I'm more on the hard of hearing side, although I do sign. Um, and um, uh, I'm a graduate of Florida State, go FSU. Um, and uh, I love to ride motorcycles. This sounds like a strange um, dating app um, thing, but, but that's who I am. That's who you're, you're talking to today. So um, very quickly, um, I know most of you know this information, but just to make sure we're all on the same page and talking the same lingo, I wanna give you a quick, um, what is IPCTS? IPCTS stands for Internet Protocol Caption Telephone Service. And all that means is it's a product or a service that allows a person with hearing loss the ability to read what's being said on a live telephone call. And it specifically deals with telephone calls. Um, it's also known in the industry as enhanced VCO or voice carryover, read and talk. You'll hear people refer to it a lot of ways. If you've been in the industry for a while, if you can, you can see my cursor on the screen, right, uh, Amy? Yeah. 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 If you've been in, if you've been around hearing loss for a while, you probably recognize, probably recognize one of these, an old TTY, TDD, whatever you want to call it. That's uh, was kind of around back in the day, and then it moved. Uh, VCO moved over to this type of device, which was specifically a VCO phone where you could read and talk. And that's what it was for years, many years. And then, um, then uh, the, fir the very first um, true, what I would call caption telephone service started. And um, I believe it was CapTel rolled it out. Um, and uh, now there's a whole industry around it. Um, and, and really the ability for captioning, read and talk, VCO, all of this really came out of ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act uh, in 1992, specifically Title IV, which dealt with the functional equivalency of the telecom service and the relay service and all that grew out of it. So if there's any questions about that, that's kind of where this whole presentation with this whole thing is going or actually has started. Um, what is the current state of the industry of IPCTS? And I know most of you know about IPCTS and what's out there, probably have questions. Um, the current state of the industry is this. Um, IPCTS is regulated by the FCC and the providers, the companies that provide this service are compensated by the TRS fund, the Telecommunications Relay Service Fund. And that fund is managed by a company called Rolka Loeb, and that is their website if you are interested. This is all public information. Most people don't know it, so I have no problem sharing it because I find it interesting. So if you ever wanna know about any of this or the public information, you can simply go to that reports tab and um, find out information. There are currently five certified or registered IPCTS providers out there, and you probably know their names. They're up on the screen. Um, clear captions, in a captions, caption call, and CapTel is represented by two different companies, um, actually three, but one of them is CapTel, and that's WCI, it's the same company. Um, uh, but Hamilton and Sprint uh, are CapTel. So there's five current providers uh, in the industry providing this service for consumers and they each have their own um, service. They all operate a little bit differently, have their own products, um, but generally provide the same service and are all compensated by the FCC out of the TRS fund for that service. Um, collectively, these five companies last month, and I say last month because the August report is only out, there was a month behind. So even though we just went into October, the September numbers haven't come out yet. So I say last month, but in the month of August 2019, collectively, these five companies were paid a total of $69 million for their service. 
that's a lot of money. That's one month, one month. And this pretty much happens every month. So paid 69 million, 69 and a half million dollars in August was divided up between these five companies for providing IPCTS. And that is a ton of money. And one of the current things going on in the industry is that the FCC has acknowledged that if this continues the way it is, the IPCTS fund will not be viable in very few years. Their fund is being drained very fast of its money. And if something is not done, there just won't be money for captioning. And so people with hearing loss will not be able to get captions on a live telephone call if something is not done. Now, John, yes? can I ask a question? Absolutely. And that is, what is the source of funds that support the current TRS fund? Great question. Um, that money comes from taxes, surcharge. Universal Service Fund is uh, the basis of a lot of it. Um, we all pay taxes as the general public, and that's where that money is coming from. Um, and this is actually, if you click on that link, this will take you to, these are the, this is all public information. Most people just don't know where to find it, but this is from Rolka, um, the August report, and it shows the current state of affairs for CTS, IPCTS, uh, and VRS, and how much was paid out for each over the month of August. And so as you can see, that's where that, that number came from. And you can also see at the bottom of all the different types of services that are available, caption telephone service or IPCTS, internet protocol caption telephone services, way over three quarters of the total amount paid out. So um, the amount of money that is going out or increasing, increasingly flowing through um, this fund is just tremendous and if something is not done soon we won't have it and that's uh, just a shame so with that said who is caption mate we know kind of we now kind of define you know uh, what the state of affairs are in the industry who is caption mate um, we're actually a company that is owned by a company called clarity and i'm sure most of you know who clarity is clarity is um, the largest manufacturer of amplified phones They've been around for the past 50 years. We're located in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and that's where I am today. Um, and they're a supplier of all kinds of equipment, caption, uh, not caption telephones, but amplified telephones, as well as alerting devices and other things such as clocks and bed shakers and things like that. And they supply those, they're a manufacturer, so they supply them to not only distributors, companies like Teltex, Harris Communications, uh, companies you probably know, but also to the state programs such as the one in, in Pennsylvania and every other state. Um, they also supply, um, as a manufacturer, they also supply um, communications equipment for, the, for uh, individuals with hearing loss to organizations such as the VA, Veterans Administration, uh, Air Force One. They <laughs> supply a lot of secure uh, telecom communications for the government, the FAA as well. Um, so, that's who CaptionMate is. We're a business owned by Clarity. And what happened was we, Clarity, looked at the current state of IPCTS and captioning and decided that something better could be done. And um, we decided that the status quo was not acceptable um, and that people with hearing loss deserve a little bit better. And we started picking apart the current captioning uh, products that were out there and decided that there was issues and we could do it better. And that's what CaptionMate is. It's a service built to take care of all of these, what we perceive as issues. Uh, faster speed and accuracy is needed. Um, if you've ever used any of the current IPCTS products, you'll know that the delay is, um, is a problem. And in fact, many IPCTS users will tell you that the service or the delay is so slow that they just can't use it. It's hard to carry on an actual conversation because there's a long delay. Um, there's no privacy for the consumer. Um, you know, the way current technology works, um, all of these five providers that we talk about have a live either transcriptionist or CA, captioning assistant operator on the call. Um, who wants another person on the call with you? That's not a real functional equivalence. Um, I worry about that. That's a huge privacy concern for me personally as a user. 
Um, uh, we were talking before the call about what happens, uh, you know, when I want to speak privately to a family or friends or what happens when I have to call the bank and, uh, you know, maybe give out the last four of my social security number or even use a credit card over the phone. There's no privacy for the consumer the way it currently stands with a third party operator on the call. There's no viable workplace solutions currently for people, which is problematic. Um, the way these current products work, um, you have to have their phone, their device, their, their large device, and you need to take it to the workplace and in most cases have an analog phone line installed in your workspace and have that separate phone, um, which does not integrate to the phones that are already in the office, um, makes it problematic. Um, uh, the other solutions are that they go in and, you know, most, most offices, business solutions, uh, they have PBX lines now. Um, it's all computerized behind the scenes. And those people don't want you, uh, want anybody playing with their PBX system. It's uh, a security issue. So there's really no viable workplace solution if you have hearing loss. None of the IPCTS products that are out there work on all platforms. Um, such as Apple or Droid or even computers, they don't all work on everything at once. And as we talked about, $69 million per month, which breaks down to $1.58 a minute, um, is draining the fund. And uh, there has to be a way to do it cheaper. That's going to save more economical. That's going to save everyone money, including us, the taxpayer. So this program, so captioning will be viable uh, moving forward in the future. So we looked at all of those things and we said, hey, there's got to be a better way. We can tackle all of those things and make a product that will save everybody money, be faster and more accurate than what's currently out there, provide total privacy for the consumer, work in the workplace and work on everybody's device. And that's what we did. And it took us about 12 months to do it. And um, the product's called CaptionMate. And that's what we're talking about today. So um, the way we found to do it is by using what they call ASR, but specifically ASR only. And ASR is an acronym for Automated Speech Recognition. And we don't only use ASR, we do it with AI or artificial intelligence as well. So the system learns. Um, it used to be back in the day, I would have certainly told you and argued that ASR was probably not there yet, not ready for prime time, but I will tell you for sure 100% that it is. It's come a long way in, in recent years and um, it functions quite well. Um, so back in April of this year, CaptionMate, we filed an application with the FCC for certification to be one of the will be the sixth certified IPCTS provider. And we're currently waiting um, for the certification. Um, about several weeks ago, the FCC went out to public notice on our application. The public notice um, time period ended on September 25th last week. So people had time to submit comments and they did. Um, and now between September 25th and October 10th um, is the reply period to those comments. And that's what we're in now is the reply period. And then after the 10th, the FCC will review all the comments and all the replies and then rule on, um, on the certification or the application. And that's where we stand. Until that time, we are currently, pardon me, self-paying for the service, which means we have people on the service, they're all beta testers, um, companies using the service, individuals using the service, and we're self-paying for it until the, that time. Um, when you say ASR, I want to be really clear. I mentioned ASR only, and I'm going to move back a slide, and I want to say ASR only in relation to ASR because I want to be very clear. All the current providers, the way all these systems work, they currently use AS automated speech recognition in some way, shape, or form. The way they currently use it is the consumer speaks, the operator or CA listens to what's being said, repeats it to a computer, and the computer then uses some type of ASR, some type of speech recognition software to turn that into captions. The only way we are doing it differently is we're removing that human. We're saying that the human is not needed. The computer can do it all by itself. And that's the only difference. The only exception to that rule is in the captions who's using live transcriptionists or 
cart. So the dispel the myths about ASR or more specifically ASR only. Um, currently, people are saying specialized metrics and standards have to be put in place specifically for ASR because before any ASR applications are certified as providers, they need very specialized metrics. And we say, okay, we totally agree that standard and metrics are needed in the industry because currently there are zero. The current five providers have absolutely no standard and metrics that they have to follow. And we believe that's part of the problem. Um, hence caption made. So we would totally agree that standard, standards and metrics are needed. Um, as far as specialized ones specifically for ASR, um, that's a very interesting discussion because it turns out that testing has already been done on ASR. In 2013, the FCC um, uh, commissioned a test uh, for newer technologies and they hired an independent third party named MITRE and that's that company is all they do is independent testing and um, that was commissioned in 2013 and the results from that test were published uh, in 2016 the report came out by MITRE and concluded that ASR they also call it automated speech to text STT that they can provide a much lower transcription delay which is better means lower delay less delay and in all but one case, ASR provided accuracy at least as good as the worst of the providers. And in two cases, they, it provided better accuracy than the current providers. Um, and with that information, the FCC took their reports and their tests and in 2018 um, issued a declaratory ruling saying that they, quote unquote, we determined that Caption telephone service and IPCTS, Internet Protocol Caption Telephone Service, using ASR to generate captions are forms of relay service eligible for compensation for the TRS funds. So they basically said the testing has been done and we agree with the test results that ASR is ready for prime time and good. Um, and hence, companies like us um, trying to build a, a, better, a better product. Um, another one of the myths is that ASR provides lower quality of service and is a is not functional equivalent. Um, to that, I snub my nose and say, well, you're wrong, MITRE. Independent testing has proven that ASR is faster and just as accurate, if not more accurate than current IPCTS. So that is functional equivalence. And um, another thing that's been pointed out is, um, all of the current five providers, only a few of them actually offer Spanish as one other language. What about individuals whose first language is not English or Spanish? One of the things CaptionMate provides is we can provide over 100 languages out of the gate. How is that not functional equivalent? Um, we also have a workplace solution. So as far as e functional equivalence goes, we would argue that uh, the current products out there are not functional equivalent for the workspace. So we believe that that is not, that argument does not hold water. And the big one that you always hear is what about privacy? Everybody says, well, ASR only can't be private. It's not private. Well, that my friends is simply just not true. In fact, ASR only products such as CaptionMate are actually what we call totally private. It, it performs total privacy. In fact, there's no CA, no transcriptionist on the call. What is less private than having somebody on your call? ASR does not. The computer does not need a third party on the call. In fact, there's no copies of the conversation or transcription saved anywhere on any server, anywhere except the individual consumer's local device, such as my cell phone, where the call was initiated from. That's the only place, nothing is ever saved. So in fact, the privacy concerns are in fact on IPCTS side, not on ASR only side, which I find quite interesting that they would bring that up. But um, um, we believe that they're actually less private. So those are the big myths that you'll hear in the answers to those. Um, people wanna know, well, what exactly are the differences between CaptionMate and the other services that are out there? And here they are. Um, this is just a, uh, a quick table to show you the current products that are out there, the current providers and what they provide and CaptionMate. Um, 
most of the other products that are out there, except for Intercaptions, um, are landline only type products. Um, you need to have their phone and you plug it into an analog phone jack and that's how you get your service. You also need Wi-Fi or internet connection with it. Um, and the captions came along and very smartly provided a, a caption for a mobile. Um, some of the other ones do have mobile type services. For instance, Clear Captions has an IS, iOS or Apple only product. Um, we do both. Caption Mate can work on mobile devices. And I mean an iPhone, a Droid, any type of mobile phone, doesn't matter what platform they're running and landline, it works on both. And you can, when I say landline, you can use whatever phone line you have. You don't need anything special. It could be just an amplified phone given to you by a state program. It could be the desk phone just sitting at your desk at your workstation right now. Um, we can extend captions to tablets, computers, smart TVs, um, and we have total privacy. The others don't. We also have faster speeds, which I'll demonstrate and just show you, imp improved speeds, and the speeds actually get faster and faster as the system learns. We can provide captions in uh, over 100 languages out of the gate. Um, we actually, pretty novel idea, we actually caption both sides of the conversation. Um, none of the other providers actually show you both sides of the conversation, which we think is a really big deal, um, especially when you go back and try to read the transcription later, if you only have one side of the conversation, it's like trying to understand a one-sided conversation. It's very difficult and it doesn't make sense when you read it. Showing both sides of the conversation, actually, when you go back and review it, it helps a lot because you can actually understand both sides of the conversation. The other piece of that is we have found out that a lot of CI, a lot of cochlear implant users, when they first get their cochlear, they're encouraged to actually make phone calls to um, help with their speech and their brain and that whole learning process again. Um, and being able to read actually what you are saying during the call, seeing both sides of the conversation actually helps. So if you have hearing loss, it actually helps you understand if you're verbalizing correctly, which is nice. Um, another feature that we have is we can actually allow the remote or far end caller to view the caption. So if I'm calling Amy, and I'm the caption mate user, if I choose to, I can actually share my conversation with her live. So she can see the same thing that I'm seeing, which is kind of neat. Um, it ensures accuracy. Um, so for example, if we're having a conversation and Amy's giving me very specific instructions and I'm concerned about the possible accuracy of the call, all I have to do is share it with her and she can look at, at what I'm seeing and say, no, 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 I said, turn left on Main Street or, Maybe it's a technical medical term that she's concerned about. She can tell if it's spelled right or not spelled right. And if it's not, repeat it to make sure that the user of the service or that I got the conversation right. Um, and of course, from a privacy perspective, as the user, when the call is over, I obviously save the transcription on my device that it was made on. But the second the call is over, it erases it from Amy's phone to save my privacy. Um, for all you techie people, um, this is how it works for all you tech geeks out there. This is actually how all IPCTS works, believe it or not. It looks very complicating and from a technical perspective, it's a little complicated. Um, what makes us different from the other providers out there is if you can see my cursor out there is this section over here with the little user person. The other guys use this. We do all of this. And the other part that sets us apart is right here in the middle, they have a person. We have a little secret sauce back here or a computer. So that's what sets us apart. Everything else is exactly the same. That's how captioning works um, from a technical perspective. There's a lot going on and the speed of technology now, uh, the speed of internet now, all this happens instantaneously. Um, so you don't even know that it's, it's really happening. It's very quick. Um, and um, before we get to the partnership, I think what I want to do is I want to jump into a demo right now and to just show you what we're talking about. And the way I'm going to do this is a little bit interesting. Um, I am going to share a different screen with you. And the screen I'm going to share with you is my computer screen. And what I have done here is I've actually logged into my account, my personal account on CaptionMate. 
And one of the things that CaptionMate does is it works on multiple devices at, at the same time. We call it simulcast. We can simultaneously broadcast captioning onto any internet connected screen. And so, for instance, if I'm at my workstation, I can just be using my normal work phone and read it on my computer screen, like I'm going to do now. Or I can make a call on my cell phone and read it on both. So CaptionMate is an app. It's an application and it's currently on the App Store if you're an Apple user or on the Play Store if you're a Droid user. And um, it's also on our, if you go to the website and you log in with your account, you can read it there as well. So what you're seeing here is the dial pad on my screen. I could actually initiate a call here, but I'm gonna do it a different way. This is my call history. Um, all the people I've called and been messing around with on the service my profile, um, it tells you everything about me as a user, my settings, um, you know, I can change the font size, the transcription color, all of that on the, on the fly. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna make a call. And if you are watching this video, I'm going to actually pick up my cell phone, my personal cell phone, and I'm gonna initiate a call on my personal cell phone using the app. And what I'm going to do is you'll see the train, you'll hear and see the transcription on my cell phone, but you'll also see it on the computer screen at the same time. So you'll hear it and see it in both places. Um, the number I'm going to call, it is a live phone call. It's not a trick. Um, I'm going to call the demo line just for ease of use. I could, I guess, call Amy, um, but I don't have her cell phone number. I'm just going to call the demo line and it's, it's what they call, um, the demo line is just a live phone call and it's called, it, it comes from what they call Harvard sentences. And Harvard sentences is um, a series of very strange words and sentences used by different people, men, women, children, different pitches, different frequencies. And it's actually the standard for testing telephony to ensure that the, the telephone lines and telephony is clear and being understood. It's also, a good way to test the service because um, it uses very strange sentences and very strange words, unlike normal conversations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock my phone and I'm going to open up the CaptionMate app and it's this little one there and I'm going to open CaptionMate and it has launched and I'm going to dial from my call history and I'm hitting the demo line and as I do that, my iPhone tells me to call the number and I'll turn on the speakerphone. And eventually the call will connect and you'll be able to hear it and read it on both. Station, take your first right, then walk down this road for about five minutes. You'll see a large red building on your left and the police station on your right. Head right past the police station and then continue up this road for about six minutes. Stop when you come to a coffee shop on your left-hand side. You're close to the station now. Turn right, then take your second right and continue straight on. You'll be able to see the train station from here. Just keep walking straight ahead. Hi, Grandma. How are you today? I hope dinner was nice. We had chicken and rice. It was very tasty. I'm going to mute the call right now. I'm going to mute the call right now. It's going to continue. But what I want to point out is what you see in the black box at the bottom is called the live chat. And the live chat is where you see the actual conversation live happening. You'll also see it correct itself. That's the artificial intelligence correcting the, the copy or the text, the captioning on the fly. So if you watch it, that's what you'll see. Then once the live chat is done, it pops up into what we call a speech bubble up at the top, almost like a text message. There's only one person talking, so you only see one type of bubble. But if there's two people talking on the call, it'll be back and forth, like on the left and the right, almost like a text message. You see Amy on one side, I'm on the other. John says this, Amy says that. You can follow it along like a, like a, uh, a text message. So I'll turn the volume back on so you can, you can hear it as we continue. A great cat gave birth to kittens. These days, a chicken leg is a rare dish. Rice is often served in round bowls. Sickness kept him home the third week. Lift the square stone over the fence. Right. 
so what you so what you're seeing now oh, okay so there's several things happen there you did see an error which is fine um, errors do happen nobody is perfect asr is not perfect captionists aren't perfect either and what we have found is that even though whoop, it went away even though there is a mistake we found that this it's the same mistakes that a captionist would make if it depends on a lot of things the computer hears what a human hears and mistakes do happen. Nothing is 100%. But what we have found is the level of accuracy is actually much higher. So if you were to actually go back and to the call history and count the words versus an error, you'd actually find the, the actual error rate is very low. The transcription was saved right here. So if I clicked on this and wanted to go back and review it, we could. This is the conversation we just witnessed. Um, so it is there and only there. It's well, it's actually on my cell phone as well because my cell phone was operating at the time and those are both my devices. Um, so hold on, let me go back to where I was. So that's kind of how CaptionMate works. Um, it's very fast. Um, uh, when the call is over, one of the things that popped up on the screen that you saw was it asks you to rate the call. It's still up on my phone. When the call is over, they want to know, um, you know, rate us four or five stars. If you rate anything less than five stars, it wants to know why. We want to know why. Um, was it inaccurate captioning? Did the app stop working? Was the text difficult to read? We want to know why. And um, then you rate the call and then it goes, you're just back to the, back to the main screen. And so that's, um, yes. Um, we do have a question from Krista. Okay. Who is wondering how it works on a landline? That's a great question. So, excellent question. Um, I'll show you how it works on a landline. I mean, I can kind of show you. I don't have a landline personally, but I can show you technically how it works. If I can find the screen. Okay. So the way it would work on a landline is this. If I am sitting in my office and I have a CaptionMate account, I can simply log into my computer like I am now. You see my screen and I can go to this dial pad right here um, and my, just have my normal desk phone, nothing special. And all I have to do is dial the number that I want to call. So for instance, if I was going to call I'm dialing my own personal number. So that's my cell phone number. So if I, let's say I was sitting at my desk and I wanted to make a call, all I have to do is simply dial the number that I want right here in CaptionMate and hit dial. Okay. And then what happens is this screen pops up and it tells me to basically what it's telling me is pick up your desk phone or your landline phone or any phone that you have and call this number. And the second you call that number, it will initiate the call and you will start, you'll hear the call on your phone and you'll read the captions on the screen. That particular number on the screen is my personal number. That's my personal caption mate number. So that's how it would work with a landline phone. Does that answer your question? Whoever asked it. Uh, Krista. Krista, does that answer your question? Yeah, so, so basically you need um, some internet connected device that will show you the caption. You need an internet connected screen. It could be a cell phone, a tablet, a computer. It could be something. And by definition, we're talking about IP CTS, internet protocol caption telephone service. So yes. Um, what's interesting about the app though, Another thing that's interesting about it is um, the app runs on my cell phone, for instance. That's how I use it mostly, personally. That's how I use it. Um, and if I'm in my house, for instance, and I have Wi-Fi, great. But when I'm out and about, I don't always have Wi-Fi and it just works on LTE. I happen to have LTE service. I've even had it work on 4G um, service fine. So um, as long as you have some connection, some service, it works. Great. So Krista says, like CapTel? Um, I can't, oh, is she speaking of web CapTel? I guess so. Yes, web CapTel. 
I've never used WebCapTel, but I, from what I understand, very similar. In a similar manner in that situation, yes. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see. I wanted to get back to this. I'm kind of sorry. I keep on looking up. I'm looking at the the time here. So, um, partnership. How do we? How can we partner? Here's the thing that we feel. We our CaptionMate's position is that we want to allow choice. We want to allow consumers to really decide what's best for them. There's a lot of people out there, the current providers, there's a lot of people out there that are against ASR only service in general for whatever reason. Um, but we believe in consumer choice and we think that consumers should be able to decide what's best for them. Uh, hearing loss is an individual thing. Everybody's is different. And um, we feel that it should be inclusive for all technologies and services and let the consumer choose what's best for them. That's really our thing. And we also believe that um, the other way to partner is to advocate for change. If you don't speak up, the FCC will never know what you and or what consumers want or need. And new technologies such as these will never see the light of day. So all we want is choice. We're pushing for choice. Um, our feeling is if people don't like our service, they will go use somebody else's service. If they like their service, wonderful. If they're not liking our service, we're going to have to do better. And we feel that that will drive consumers can make the choice for themselves and they will drive the market. Um, that's what we believe in. We believe that new technologies such as CaptionMate should be made available and let consumers choose and drive the market for what they want and need. Um, on top of that, what's interesting is since we don't have the overhead that the current providers have, we can do it for less money. So we can save the FCC and the consumers money, keeping the service viable um, for future generations, which is a nice thing. You know, we don't have call centers that are overseas employing hundreds of people that have to be on call 24 seven. You know, the computer doesn't get tired. Um, it doesn't need a break. It's always functioning. It's always operational. So, um, you know, we, we can do it and we, um, we feel do it better. And um, that's how we feel we can partner. We feel that um, if, um, if, if folks out there in the know, such as you, um, advocate for themselves and for consumers and let them know that these new technologies are out there and consumers should be able to choose, that's what we're all about. Um, are you, John, are you still looking for beta testers? That is a great question. Um, I was, that was my last slide is question. <laughs> and so good timing. Um, so when we first, when Amy, when you first sent out the email, we actually had quite a few people respond and we do have some folks that are actually beta testers right now. I don't know if any of them are on the call right now. Are, I'm going to throw it out there. Is anybody on the call right now? One of our current beta testers? Yeah, I had, I had already asked that question and didn't get anybody responding. Nobody wanted to, nobody wanted to respond. Okay, fair enough. We do have some that are current beta testers. I will tell you that. I know that for a fact. Um, and the beta testing is going great. Um, our beta testers have allowed us to just gain tons of information and knowledge about what we could do better and how to do it better. For instance, one of the things was people, we had provided different size fonts on the call. Somebody said, no, 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 you need an extra large font pe for people with low vision. So we instituted that. People were talking about, we need different colors on the, on the screen because some people with different vision issues need different color contrasts instead of just white and black. And we said, perfect. So we've instituted new colors. Um, we found out a lot um, and we've instituted, we've been able to upgrade the system as we go. So, which has been really good. And to answer your question, I don't want to skirt the question. Um, to answer your question, um, some people have tried to contact us what we've told people is that the beta tests are closed right now and we will let them know when it's available to the general public. Um, what I will say on this call right now to this group today is that we're not taking any new beta testers during this public notice comment period and reply period for sure. That's just off, off limits because of what's going on with the FCC right now and we have to get through this process. But we're also telling people right now as of today that once that process is over, which is should be over by, I believe about around, officially it ends on October 10th. We're gonna say October 15th. 
Um, we will consider taking in some more beta testers, which is good news. Um, I will tell you that the way it works for beta testing um, is this. Um, you will, if you want to be a beta tester, you can email me, um, john at captionmate.com, or you can email us at support at captionmate.com. Either address will get to me. Um, and we will first ask you to sign a piece of paper as a beta tester. And that paper will tell you that it has to do with privacy. Um, and we want to ensure that um, our beta testers are not really our competitors, just saying that you don't work with competitive companies or have a relationship with one of the current companies, other providers, because um, we really need to get feedback, not just negativity, but you know, we need to get all kinds of feedback. So if you're willing to sign the document, the privacy document saying that you're a beta tester and you will ensure our privacy, then <clears throat> we can issue you a referral code, which will then allow you to activate the app. And, um, and that's all there is. And there'll be some questions such as, are you an iOS user? Are you a Droid user? You know, and this is the link to go get the app. Just go to the Play Store, go to the App Store. And in fact, if you go to the app or the Play Store and you type in the word CaptionMate, you will see the app. You can download the app, you can install the app, but as you start registering, you'll get about halfway through the registration process and it will stop you without a referral code. And I'm the one that has the referral code. So um, yeah, yeah. So, so once you, uh, after October, eh, around October 15th, if you're interested in beta testing, I would love to, we'd love to accept some new ones, especially you guys that are out there in the field and very close to the, you know, what we do and the consumer, we think that your feedback would be wonderful. If you send me the information, John, I can put it out there to the um, ATF programs. Fantastic. Um, so that's kind of how it would work. So to answer the question, yes, after around October 15th, we would be accepting new beta testers. The other reason is after the 15th, um, we've just made some upgrades to based on feedback from the current testers, and we want to upload those uh, to the new app um, to make sure that everybody's using the latest software. But um, yeah, we'd love to, to get more feedback and more people using the service, the more the merrier. Um, that's how the service gets better. Um, so um, yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, we, are you ready for a few more questions? Shoot, absolutely. Okay, Tiffany from Alaska. Hey Tiffany, I know you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wants to know, can you add words and their pronunciation to the service? Apple has an accessibility section where we can add words and pronunciations. I've been able to put Alaskan cities in it so it knows how to read and spell it. It works better for text to speech, but I'm hoping STT will get better. Is this something the caption mate might consider adding if it doesn't already have that functionality? Great question, Tiffany. And um, the answer is yes. We have, the consumer does not have the ability, we have the ability. So for instance, from the consumer's point of view, if there's a long or strange word and they say it and they notice it's not spelled right, they could obviously say it again and spell it letter by letter to ensure that it's being understood. If you're sharing the third party link, like we had talked about, the other party could speak it as well. Um, if that's not working, we definitely have the ability to enter words into the system. The consumer does not. Um, we haven't decided, honestly, how to handle that yet. If we've noticed, Tiffany, that certain, I don't know, a, word, a name of a city in Alaska that's quite strange, if she's noticing that that word's being misspelled all the time, how we, we don't really have, we haven't really figured out a mechanism now to, for her to submit that so we can enter it into the system. Just in all fairness, we don't know. Um, how that mechanism would work, but the capability is there to do it. Thank you. Uh, we did have um, another question. Clayton was wondering, uh, why would you say the fund is running out of money? Uh, that's what the FCC says. The FCC claims that based on the current projections and money that's being spent, that if that trend continues, then the, the, the spending can't continue. You know, it's like, it's like your bank account. There's only so much money in the fund, right? And if the spending based on the increase in the current spending and the increase in minutes, they claim that the, based on those current numbers, the way it continues or increases, the fund won't be viable. That's the FCC's comments. 
Thanks. Any other questions? I don't see any right here, right now. Okay. So what are your last words? My last words are that um, if you're interested in beta testing, we would love to have you. Um, I'll send Amy the information. Um, as far as questions about CaptionMate um, and ASR only type products, um, let us know, you know, sure, feel free to email me or email Amy and she'll email me. Um, we had, you know, it's out there, um, it's new technology, it's gonna help a lot of people um, and uh, we'd like to see it available. And um, if you'd like to see it available, advocate, talk to the FCC, advocate for, you know, new technology. So that's the only way things change. So um, that's about it. I appreciate your time today. And uh, if you have questions, let me know. Well, that's, that's great, John. And uh, everybody, you will, as usual, be getting a very short survey. And if you kindly complete the survey, uh, we'd appreciate it. And hope to see you all at our next webinar on November 13th. So cool. John, thanks again. Good luck with caption, mate, and we look forward to updates. Very exciting. Excellent. Thanks a bunch. I appreciate it, Amy, and thanks everybody. Have a great Wednesday. Thank you. Bye-bye.